Hello, everybody. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce and happy, happy May. So this is just a quick little channel update video for the month of May. I want to start doing these every month just to kind of keep you guys in the loop because life does get crazy sometimes. Now, of course, today is Monday, tomorrow, Tuesday, May 3rd. Every Tuesday, I go on live with David Zublik from the Dark Outpost TV from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. However, tomorrow, Jamie Soleil is going to come on with me at the 11 o'clock hour. It's 9 o'clock for her, so just adjust accordingly wherever you live in the world. Um, David Zublik, of course, most of you know that with the Dark Outpost TV, that he was one of the original people in our community. He was one of the OGs. And when YouTube had its big flush a few years ago, his channel was one of the ones to get taken down. He now has his own like TV platform where you can go and watch his episodes. And since the takeover of Twitter, he is now streaming live on Twitter too. So if you're not on the Dark Outpost TV platform, if you follow David Zublik on Twitter, you will be able to watch all of the episodes there as well, live in the moment. I will link his Twitter down in the description box below so that you can easily click over to it and make sure you're following him. I will also link Jamie Slay's Twitter as well, since that is one of the best ways to keep up with her and to be in connection with her. Now, I believe on Wednesday, Sean Stone is going to be back on the channel. And then on Thursday, Jamie Slay will be once again back on with me and Catherine Edwards for another episode. Any questions that you have for Jamie, leave them down below in the comment section so that I can ask her, Catherine and I can ask her those questions for you. Now, Oh, yes. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you know that I am looking heavily into Tartaria. This is something I have looked into before, and I absolutely do believe it existed. It does um, inform me a lot in my research when it comes to prophecies and probabilities throughout different theories and religious text. However, I'm not the expert on Tartaria. There are so many channels out there that are strictly dedicated to this subject. So my video on Tartaria is actually going to have to do with the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Summer Games. This also uh, corresponds with a lot of the research I've done into the American continent and the true story of Yahshua and Mary Magdalene. So that's the angle that I'm coming at Tartaria with. So um, again, it's not going to be a full on explanation like other people do because they do it way better than me. I will reference a lot of people that I've re used for my research. So you guys can go and follow them. I do believe in giving credit where credit is due. And so I will put those links in the video down below, not this video, but the video for T Tartaria so that you guys can further your own research into this very fascinating and kind of a gut punch type of discovery. It's been made apparent to me that with Tartaria, we need to be very, very careful with the manipulation of past lives. If you understand with Tartaria, our modern time didn't start until like the late 1700s with the mud floods. So that means that before that we were in Tartaria, which was the thousand years of peace. And so anybody that's selling you stories about past lives beyond that, it's bullshit. They're manipulating you. So just be very, very careful with that. That's something I also wanted to point out as well. Any questions you have regarding Tartaria, if you want me to try to cover them in the episode, again, leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best. The first episode on Tartaria, I'm probably going to just do with Stephanie as we go over some of the basic information presented in Tartaria, like incubator babies, um, mud floods, all that kind of stuff to kind of help us get a better idea of what this actually is. And then the next episode, I'm going to bring Jamie back on for us to go through the 1996 Olympic opening games and what they were signaling in that those games in relationship to our true history as human beings, especially our true history here in the American continent. Um, somebody asked me a question regarding twin flames. Um, so I want to just clarify this again. So for my understanding of twin flames, which really is backed by Plato Symposium, Plato Symposium, I've been studying for a very long time, long before YouTube ever, because I find philosophy to be very fascinating. Twin flames, again, are the same soul. So it's a soul that split into two different people, typically a divine masculine and a divine feminine, but they are the same soul. That does not mean that the two people housing this soul are, you know, incomplete, not at all. They are complete and enough by themselves, but they have split. Usually the split happened 
people believe the split happened with the souls many, 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 many years ago, um, long before this timeline. And it is believed that in most circumstances, when you are on the earth plane, your twin will actually be in the quantum or the ethereal, like helping you, guiding you. Only when it's a super potent timeline, do you both come down together as human beings. And so a lot of twin flames are here, both incarnated into human beings at this time. Of course, in the quantum, their higher selves are always quantum entangled, always. That's why twin flames have a huge connection and a lot of telepathy is because their higher selves are literally still quantum entangled, even though their lower selves are in physical bodies. We talk a lot about the fall of Atlantis mirroring what's happening right now. The fall of Atlantis happened right before Tartaria. Fall of Atlantis, yes, twin flames were both here on the earth as well together at that time because that was a potent time. And for parts of Tartaria, twin flames were here on the earth plane together. Now, somebody asked, uh, made a comment that maybe twin flames um, change out in different lives. No, that's not true. Your twin flame is always your twin flame, regardless of what body you're in. Um, from what I understand, when the soul makes that decision to split and become divine feminine and divine masculine, whoever the feminine is will say the feminine, whoever the masculine is will say the masculine, they pretty much will continue to incarnate into those two beings. They, they never really switch off, you know, if that makes sense. And so no, so if you're in this life, and you have a twin, that twin has been your twin since you guys split souls you don't soul swap anything like that you are always your twins twin now when it comes to the relationship that you have with your twin it depends on your soul contract so most of the time i would guess to say 99.9 percent .9 of the time twin flames will be in a romantic relationship um, if you heard me speak about this with Jamie and Stephanie, there is a play called Hedwig and Ang Angry Inch, and there's a song called Origins of Love, and it is basically based off of Plato's Symposium. And he talks about in the song, the soul splitting. And then when they come, they find each other, the act of making love, that intimacy is the souls putting themselves back together. Now, when that happens, the vibrational frequency raises because it's literally the same soul in two different bodies. And so obviously that's very, very, very potent and it can vibrationally change and ricochet outside of the body of the two bodies, if you guys understand what I'm saying. So that is why most of the time twin flames do end up in a romantic relationship. Another thing about the twin flame um, relationship is that it's not going to be your high school sweetheart. It's probably not going to be somebody that you meet in your 20s. It's probably not going to be your first husband, first wife, second husband, second wife. You usually meet your twin flame later in life. And that is because if you don't work on your shit, the twin flame relationship is going to be disastrous because they literally mirror you with your issues. Not necessarily the way, well, there are some things that are similar in the way you look, but they will mirror your, your issues. And so if you both have this window of time in your life to work on yourself before meeting that person so that when you do actually come into contact with that person, um, there's magic, right? There's not disastrous shit happening. It's magical. Yeah. And it can actually be very, very beneficial. Again, yes, a lot of time twins will have the same ear. They'll have the same structure of the ear. Sometimes the palms will look very similar, but they can be different races. Uh, you can have a twin that is a different race from you, different hair color, different eye color. You're not, you're not twins in the sense that you look exactly the same. Obviously not. You're from two different genetic families, right? Um, but there are going to be little things about your, your body and your features that are, are very similar. It's also very common and not, not, all the time, but also very, very common in twin flame relationships for the male, the masculine to be a good bit older than the female, 10 years, 15 years, sometimes, um, which is funny because most of my life, I've only really ever dated men who were 10 to 15 years older than me. All of my long-term relationships have been with men um, who are a little bit older than me. That's just 
I have the propensity to do that. So that was interesting to me when I, when I found that information out, I don't know why that is. Usually the female is the one that activates um, the tower moment for both of them. And whether she knows it or not, a lot of times in a uh, twin flame relationships, they will meet and then they will be ripped apart for a while. I don't know why that is, but apparently that's common. And um, a lot of times twin flame relationships do get spiritually attacked a lot. In fact, um, if you meet your twin, usually your twin and you will have a uh, very similar history when it comes to uh, spiritual experiences, attacks, all that kind of stuff. It can be kind of gnarly from the um, similarities that, that you could have. I mean, with that being said, one of you could have grown up poor, the other could have grown up rich. Those things don't matter. What it is, again, is these spiritual experiences that you are both having in different lives, in different areas of the world. Now, this again is different from a high level soulmate. High level soulmates are also very important people in your life that you can have romantic relationships with, but they are not your twin because they are a separate soul. And a lot of times your high level soulmate, if you are on a twin flame journey and you are with a high level soulmate at the moment, Typically, your high-level soulmate also has another twin flame out there. And I think a lot of people are experiencing that kind of divide now between high-level soulmates and twin flames. It's, it's very weird. It's, it's very hard. It's very strange. There's a lot of resistance, a lot of friction, but it's all part of the journey, right? And so, but if you don't have a twin flame, so if you're not someone whose soul has split, then your high level soulmate is going to be a very beautiful relationship, right? It's, it's nothing to, you know, the twin flame, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to romanticize the twin flame journey. It, it, it can be very romantic, but it's also very, very hard and difficult. And from what I understand, um, only the real oldest of souls have been the ones to decide to split. And the, the fact that they decided to split is, is something they, they decided to do for their own journey, for their own healing and self-discovery. So again, I wanted to clarify what I understand from my studies of Plato's Symposium and other works on the Twin Flame journey. Once again, your Twin Flame is always your Twin Flame. They don't switch out because you your body changes in different lives, but your, your soul remains the same. So, um, so that I just want to clarify that too, for you guys, your high level soulmates can switch out because you have multiple high level soulmates, but your twin flame, there's only one twin flame. You got only one in every life. That's it. That, that one, that one twin. I also want to say a very, very special thank you to all of the Atlanta people who came out for the first night of my last six week course indefinitely here in Atlanta my job before YouTube, obviously, I am the only female authorized teacher here in the state of Georgia. I worked really hard to get that authorization. And um, before YouTube, that was what I was known for, these courses that I, I teach and I run. Um, and then once YouTube picked up, I, I just, I've gotten, I've gotten so busy and I'm filming nonstop and I'm researching nonstop. And my life is definitely very, very much in a, a transitional phase right now. Not quite sure where I'm transitioning to, but I'm just flowing with it to see where the universe wants to take me. And because of my hectic schedule with YouTube and filming and researching, I just can't teach any more courses. I, I just don't have the energy to continue to teach these six week courses. And so the start of this last six week course last night um, is the start of the last one for a while. And we were over capacity. We allowed the studio allowed more students in than normal because it was my last one for a while, like, like I said, indefinitely. And so um, thank you guys all who came out. You guys know I, I love to teach. It's I'm, a, I'm good at teaching. I know I'm good at that. Um, and I love doing it. But at this point, I have to flow, I have to go where the wind's taking me. And I have to focus on um, all of my research and my YouTube right now. And um, I know you guys understand that because I'm only one person and I only have so much energy. And so thank you guys so much who came out. Uh, if the day comes that I ever teach another course, another six week course again, I will definitely let everybody know. Um, but for now, that's going to be paused because I need to focus on my channel. I need to focus on the other channels that I go on where I present my research. And most importantly, I need to focus on my research. So thank you guys for understanding that. And again, thank you so much to all the Atlanta students who came out last night, who signed up for the course and are in it for these next five weeks that we have ahead of us. Thank you guys so, so, so much.
All right, that's about it. I hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead. Uh, keep your head held high. The best is yet to come. And we are going to get through this. We are all just walking each other home. Bye, guys.